Good afternoon, Green Valley. And welcome to my crib. You're supposed to say GVTV. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, welcome to this week's episode of GVTV. Yeah, uh, but with more enthusiasm. Oh, oh. <clears throat> welcome to this week's episode of GVTV. Well, <laughs> great. Uh, as you can see, we have Quentin Albertson on. Uh, he's going to be shadowing the great Aaron Hayes. Yeah, Aaron, I'm real honored to be here, and I'm just you know, hoping to learn some good tips for next year. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to introduce the first story for us? I sure can. First off, we have Cooper and Hannah out in the field reporting on a recent tornado that just hit Oak Grove just a couple of weeks ago. Cooper, Hannah? As many of you know, Monday, March 6th, an EF3 tornado touched down in some of our very own backyards. However, the destruction was not isolated to our community alone. The large twister traveled at wind speeds of up to 152 miles per hour over to our neighboring community where it released the majority of its destruction. It touched down at 8.12 p.m. south of Green Valley near South Buckner Tarsney Road and traveled east through Oak Grove to just west of Odessa, covering nearly 12 miles in only 15 minutes. The tornado damaged 483 homes and 10 to 12 commercial buildings, making Oak Grove the hardest hit of several communities in Missouri raked by storms Monday night and early Tuesday. Fortunately for the people of Oak Grove, no deaths occurred and only 15 to 20 were injured. By the time the storm had settled, it left families homeless, desperate, and pondering exactly what their next move should be. Although the community of Oak Grove certainly felt the power of Mother Nature, they proved that they would not let it get the best of them. As a community, people rose up and took action, either to collect the remnants of what was once their home, or friends, family, and even strangers coming together to do whatever they could do to help. One group, in particular, that really stepped up and aided those in need was none other than the students of our neighboring school, Oak Grove High School. We got the chance to catch up with them to see exactly what it was like. Hi guys, I'm here with Kira, a junior here at Oak Grove High School. So Kira, where were you on the night of the disaster? I was at the choir concert here in the PAC. All right, and can you tell me your initial reaction to what happened? I was kind of surprised, like I wasn't ex like nothing really happens here, like, you know, and something like that drastic it happened in like thir like 30 minutes top, like I don't know, it's very surprising and shocking. All right, thank you so much. All right, Grand Valley. Now I'm here with Kenton Wilhoyt, a junior here at Oak Grove High School, and Kenton, what did you do to help the cause here? Uh, both days we had off of school. Me and a bunch of friends went up there, helped clean up yards, helped pick up trash, and move people out of their houses that were affected. Awesome, and why do you think it's important to uh, help your community? Our community is really tight-knit, and we all support each other, so the, practically the whole town is out there, and we have like a one-family motto in Oak Grove, and so that's why everyone came out and supported. Very cool, thank you, Kenton. Thank you, Cooper. I'm here with Madison, a junior at Oak Grove High School. So Madison, where were you on the night of the disaster? I was actually heading home from a choir concert, and we literally raced it home, and we live 15 miles out of town, so we were able to get away from all of it, but all right, and what did you do to help after you found out everything that had happened? Uh, I mostly helped people from my church that had been part of the disaster and had completely lost their homes. We helped them go through stuff and find whatever they could get that was theirs. All right, thank you so much. Seeing how the students of Oak Grove did their part, it may leave many of you wondering, what can you do to help? Next up, we got the chance to talk to a couple organizations who are in charge of coordinating volunteers. And the Oak Grove Chief of Police also gave his advice as to how we as students can get involved. Hey Grand Valley, and I'm here with Missy with the Methodist Confidence. And Missy, how can Grand Valley students get involved and how can they help? 
Well, we have a uh, volunteer uh, reception service set up at New Life Church in Oak Grove, and they can come out and help us there from 8 until, we're taking them until 3, and you can work until 5. Uh, we do ask that you contact 211, so you would just dial 211, and that's where you can get more information about the requirements to come out. And we do ask that you bring your driver's license with you. Awesome, thank you very much. And now this is Keenan with AmeriCorps St. Louis. And Keenan, can you describe to us exactly what you do and what you're doing to help the cause here? Yeah, well, we're together with Missy at the New Life Church coordinating volunteers, so we want our volunteers to be effective in the cleanup process and the recovery of the community here. So we're trying to harness the volunteer effort and match them up with the needs in the community so that we can do that effectively in a coordinated, efficient manner. Awesome, thank you very much. Now that you students know, you have no excuse not to get involved. Hi everyone, I'm here with Chief of Police from Oak Grove, Brian Price. So Brian, can you give a little advice to students from Grain Valley who are wanting to help um, with the disaster relief in Oak Grove? Sure, uh, we have had several groups of students, especially from Oak Grove, uh, volunteer to help and they've been in the affected areas uh, cleaning up and everything. They, there's now an organization, it's at uh, New Life Church, if they want to go a group or individual, they can go and register, they get quick training, and then uh, they get passes to go into the area and help clean. And that's probably the best way to do that. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Those of you who are interested in helping out, there are many ways in which you can do so. For financial donations, dial 211 on your phones to talk to those in charge of collecting financial support. Also, Youth Advisory Council and GV Student Government will be collecting items from paper plates and bottled water to personal hygiene items through March 20th for the Community Service League. And for those of you interested in volunteering, you can do so by contacting New Life Church in Oak Grove, Missouri. Hope you guys got a first-hand view of the damage that occurred here and saw a little bit about how we can help. Don't be afraid to get involved. Now back to you in the studio. Man, that's some pretty upsetting damage. Yeah, I can't even imagine what I would do if it affected my hometown. Agreed. Remember, GVHJS students, it is very really important that you will go out and help Oak Grove with the situation. So make sure to reach out and volunteer to help uh, find other ways how you can help. Yeah, and show your support to the city in need. It's definitely a great cause. Speaking of supporting a very good cause, GVTV's own Lexi Allen is out covering Grain Valley's recent blood drive. Great transition there, Quentin. <laughs> okay, but now it was ruined because it commented on, on air. Uh, okay, but now it's even worse because we haven't moved on to our next door. Well, we could move on to our next door, but now we're just like, you know, back and forth. I mean, and then like... I, I think we had it right the first time, Quentin. All right, let's head out <laughs> to Lexi. <laughs> Hey Grain Valley, I'm Lexi, and today we're going to go learn a little bit about the blood drive and what it's all about. Hey guys, I'm here with Ari, and she's one of our coordinators for the blood drive. So Ari, how many people did you have sign up for the blood drive? Um, we had a little over 80 sign ups. That's super good. And what are some of the reasons people should donate blood? Um, you should donate blood because your donation alone can save up to three lives. Okay, and where does the blood that is donated go to? Um, so before they can give your blood um, anywhere, they actually will test it and make sure that it's good to go. And it'll go actually to hospitals all over the Kansas City area. Okay, thank you very much, Ari. Because I know if I needed blood, someone else would give it to me. My blood type is O negative, so it mixes with all the others, and I wanted to save lives to help out the community and also help out my family and friends if they ever need blood and just to know that I can do it. I hope you guys consider donating blood someday. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lexi. I'll keep that in mind the next time the blood draft comes to our school. Uh, hey, Quentin, you know what's next? Yes, I know what's next. Stay tuned in because after this quick commercial break, we will be back with Ryan Childers reporting on what FCCLA is up to.
uh, and a sneak peek trailer from Little Shop of Horrors. That's right. When I decided to write a ton of world-famous music after I'd lost my hearing, people thought I was crazy. Just like the other day when I wanted chicken for breakfast, people thought I was crazy again. How'd everything play out? Let me tell you about it. I'll bet you ten bucks that you have heard the tune I'm singing now. Because I went on to be the best composer of all time. Then I went down to Chick-fil-A and ordered their brand new egg white grill. The whole thing was 300 calories and seriously the best thing I've ever had. So to recap, I'm the best composer ever in the entire world. And Chick-fil-A's new egg white grill is really, 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 really good. Chicken for breakfast. It's not as crazy as you'd think. Try the new egg white grill from Chick-fil-A. At Big Frog, we make custom t-shirts and a whole lot more. No setup fees, no minimums, free design service and quality that lasts. Come see what Big Frog can do for you. Fast delivery and personalized service, we print orders from 1 to 1,000 in any style you choose. Your artwork or ours, at Big Frog we make custom t-shirts and a whole lot more right before your eyes. Seems that this episode has been all about support, helping out others around you, and our third story fits that standard as well. Yes, uh, FCCLA went to state to represent GVHS, and Rylan is going to give us a report on what happened this weekend. Rylan? Hey guys, FCCLA has been up to some pretty big stuff. Let's go see how they did this past weekend at state. All right, so FCCLA is Family Careers Community Leaders of America. It's the only um, school functioned club that family is the center focus of it. So this past weekend, we went down to Tantara with three of our students who competed at the state level. We came home with two golds and a silver. They competed in, um, there were 1,600 students from all over Missouri there. Um, our girls, um, and we do have guys in the club as well, but our girls that went down and competed, competed in um, reuse and recycle. Um, we had a student that competed in job interview and then we had a student that competed in um, career investigation and um, they just did a great job. It was our first opportunity to go down and compete at state. Hi my name is Angel and I competed in recycle and redesign and I got a silver. Hi, my name is Haley Barnett. So I went to state this weekend for FCCLA. I competed in career investigation. I was one of the top eight people to receive a gold medal. Hi, my name is Megan Hodges and I competed in the job interview for FCCLA state and I got a gold. I was most nervous for giving my speech during my presentation, but that actually ended up being my best part of my entire presentation, so. Um, I think what I was most nervous for this past weekend was doing better than I did at regional competition. I'd have to say that I was most nervous for, um, because it was our first competition, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, so I was really nervous. I didn't know what I was going into or how I'd do, but it, it all um, worked out good in the end. So. so my favorite part of this weekend was hanging out with friends and going shopping. Since this was my first time at state, we got to attend a lot of a lot of leadership sessions, so I learned a lot about how to put yourself out there and how to be a leader and what it's like to compete at the state level. I'd have to say that my favorite part of the weekend was just spending time with um, all the, the girls and um, the advisors, and it was just a lot of fun just um, hanging around and getting super close with them. So It's pretty exciting to see that we have such great clubs to represent our school. Congrats, guys. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Rylan, and congrats on an incredible state competition for FCCLA. Now check out this trailer of Little Shop of Horrors, a very mysterious horror story acted out by our own theater department.
that's all we have for this week's episode. All right, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, at GVHS Eagle Media. Thank you for letting me come anchor this week. I know the great and fearless lead anchor has taught me a lot. Oh, well, I think you did a great job here. I'm, I'm excited for next year. I mean, it's going to be awesome with you on it. And from all of us here at GVTV, keep it real and have a nice day. <laughs>